Everybody, Scout Crafter here again. I just finished mowing the lawn and look how nice it looks, nice and green. Until the summertime, we're probably gonna get a drought this year, but uh, okay, I was uh, gonna do a, a little bit of a rant. My girlfriend says, don't do a rant, whatever you do, so uh, let's go downstairs. Do okay, one. real quick one. You know, uh, lately I love uh, on the news, you hear some of these people uh, calling for a defunding of the police department or abolishment of the police department. And I have to tell you something. I know that there's a, a bunch of you out there like me that would love to see that happen just for a little while, just so that these the same people calling for the defunding and abolishment of a police department would be the first ones <laughs> begging uh, to have somebody help them when their house is getting broken into or when something happens. And it's just, it's a funny thing. You know, and when I drove a bus, we used to, we were a private company at first and we used to strike every few years. And uh, when we had a, a strike, it was usually for a couple weeks or so. And, and when we came back from the strike, people, the people that always took you for granted and they were always like, oh, thank God you're back and God bless you. I'm so glad you're back. And it was like so nice when you came back from a strike. I only wish the police department could strike. I wish they could because people, it's such a, a, a unthankful position that they have, you know, and and they really need the uh, to be appreciated. And you don't appreciate something until it's gone. So you have to take it away for people to realize what they do, you know, because it's it's thankless, you know, people don't realize it. So I would love to see that happen just for a little while, you know? It would be it would be fun to see the turmoil. If you think if you think the what you saw in the streets was uh that was just the beginning. Just the beginning because there's a lot of people out there that uh, if there was no police department or nothing keeping them in check, they would just go wild. Okay, how about that okay, for, for today's project? My girlfriend, uh, I made a, a nice bird table for her, I guess about five years ago. And, uh, you know, the, the weather gets to him after a while. It's time to make another one. Let's make one today, start to finish, and I think you'll find it pretty interesting if you like woodwork. Okay, this is what's called a bird table. It's different from a birdhouse, you know, but this is where you would make to uh, get the birds to come feed. They're great. And this is Kenji the Wonder Cat, who... Uh, who enjoys taking a nice roll in the grass. Now, bird tables are pretty much consumable. They only last a couple years because they're made of wood and they're outside all the time. This is wood that I found when I'm going on my walks or I drive. If I see somebody throw out a piece of plywood like this, I pull over, throw it in the back of the car, and I throw it in my scrap pile just for situations like this. So uh, this is an old 2 by 3 Here is a couple pieces of plywood. And this is the base off the old bird table. There was nothing wrong with that. So I took this base and we're going to make a new... Now, if you're thinking of getting into woodworking, two thing, two must-have items that I find in a shop is one, a, a table saw, a decent table saw. And the other one is a... Uh, a uh, miter saw and uh, you know an electric miter saw these things are fantastic and uh, they true up all your cuts and it's just so easy to use and and they're so cheap now you can get a good one for a hundred dollars you know uh, get one of these get a carbide blade and you're all First thing set. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna true up this edge now I found this piece of wood so I don't know if somebody cut it with a handsaw or whatever so I want to make sure that's square and true and I'm just gonna cut off a little bit off the edge Now we know we have a square, true edge to work with. That's always the first step. Next step, I want to make the uprights. I don't even, I'm not even measuring it. I'm just going by approximate, and then I'm going to cut here, and then I'm going to cut another one the same length. Now, when you want to cut something the same length, two boards the same length, again, don't try and measure and cut and draw a line. Forget about all that. You already have one piece. You want to match this exactly. So you lay this on top of the uh, piece, the second piece, and you, you get it nice and, and flush over here. See, now it's nice and flush, just perfectly flush. Then what you do, you bring your saw down like this and you, pre you pull this over like this and you just rest it lightly against the side of the saw. And now... This will be the exact same size as that one when you cut it. Now you can see you take those two pieces of wood, you put them flat here, and you'll see you got a perfectly, perfectly matched piece. And you don't no measurements Next at all. Next up, we want to cut this to a, a point up here. You're at 45 degree angle. So we're going to loosen up here. There's a little detent that you uh, loosen up. 
you bring the saw down a little bit and you turn it like this until you'll hear this little clicks at every like at uh 22 and a half at uh 32 you know at this little detent and then all of a sudden when you get to 45 you hear that click that's that you're at 45 now now you lock this down at 45 you can also if you were doing something real you would check it and you would take a uh you know, a, a square and you would check it like this to uh, to make sure that you're at 45, um, which you could see we are. Now, um, what you want to do is you want to mark the center of this uh, piece of wood, the stand up, put it down here, and we're going to put the blade over here so that just that little carbide tip just touches just over here. We want to cut it just like that. The same thing on the other side, and we'll have a uh, 45 degree point. Again, get it right on the tip. Uh, you want to put that carbide part right on the tip so that you're not overcutting it. Your uh, perfect point. That's how, you, how easy that is. What you want to check your work, you just take your scrap and you line up your scrap pieces like this, and they should be exact. They should be two exact cuts, and that's how you know you did a good cut. Next up, to make your second cut easier, just lay the first one on top of the second one. Make sure it's nice and level, and you make sure the backs, and then you just take and scribe the line here, and now you have a scribe line like this. You see that? And then you just put that in here, rest the blade against the outside of the line, and make that now, when cut. When I say outside of the line, take a look at these carbide teeth here. You want to rest that carbide tooth just on the outside, the waste area of that line, to make the cut. Just like this one is. That's what it should look like. You see, you just, you know, you just almost split the line. You can always take more off, but this is the important part. Now, when your cuts are done, this is what you should have. You should have something that looks just like this. Very nice, very clean. Now, very again, straight. we're not doing any measurements here. No tape measurements. So, you just stand up. You stand, you know, your uprights where you think you want them somewhere on the board. Uh, you just look at this beautiful two by two I got from Home Depot. If you look around, every once in a while you get some really nice wood, especially in the select. There's no knots in here. What a beautiful piece of pine. So, we're going to put this over here like this. Just get the approximate right here. Make a little mark. And, uh, and then we'll cut that with the miter saw, and that's, that's again, no measurements. Now, before you put your miter saw away, one thing you want to do is you have this top piece here that's going to go between the two parts here. Now, you want to cut another piece of scrap, just any scrap wood, the same exact length as this piece here, and I'll show you why. This is a really good tip for helping to uh, apply this to the okay, upright. Okay, now this is where it gets fun. Now, you see, by cutting this little piece of scrap, we put it over here, we lined it up, put a little bit of glue in here, and now with two pipe clamps, one on each side, uh, these pipe clamps are, are great. If you don't have them, you got to get a pair or a few. And uh, they come in kits. You buy the, it comes with this piece and this piece, and you just buy the pipe, whatever length you want. Uh, now you can see we got this nice and straight here. Now what we're going to do, we glued it already, but we're going to put a couple screws in at each end, drill it first, put a couple screws in, and that is our base and then we put the roof onto here so you see how easy now, the this fastener is. fastener we're going to use to uh to screw this in here is a three inch long it's a uh, deck fastener and you could see it has a, a little cut in there that means it's self drilling self tapping and you could see up here this is important you see how this isn't threaded all the way to the top and that's important because you want this to pull if this was threaded all the way it wouldn't pull this this part to that part so you need this part to be uh, not threaded and uh what you do is you drill this hole just about the same thickness as this. So when you put this in, you want, again, that to pull. And this is a T25. It's a Torx head. And it uses this T25 bit, which is absolutely unbelievable. These are the way to go. They don't slip. And now what we're going to do is we're going to countersink it. Uh, before we put the, the, these are kind of, they'll kind of self countersink, but they can split a little bit. So I like to take a countersink bit like this and just countersink a little bit. There we go. So that'll give a nice, neat appearance when the screw goes in. Now you see how neat and clean that is. Now, if you don't have a uh, drill to put this in, you don't worry. A lot of the boxes come with the bit, and you it's a quarter-inch bit. You could just put it into your socket like this, and uh, and you could drive it into like that, you know, using a quarter-inch socket. So don't worry if you don't have a uh, 
driver. Right? Next up, we're going to take the base of the bird table. We're going to take our uprights, like I said, that we have here. Again, remember, this piece isn't uh, isn't affixed to it. It's just to hold them apart so that they stay, you give it some stability. But you're going to center this, put this in here. Then you're going to take your pencil and you're going to draw around both of these uprights once you have it centered where you're happy. Next, you could see once I drew that line, I drilled two holes in each one of those squares. On the bottom, I countersunk them. And now we're going to draw uh, four, four screws. We're going to drill four screws up through the bottom into these uprights with glue. First, we're going to put now glue it's come on time here. to cut our roof. And uh, we want our roof to be like a 45, like this, you know. Now, you got to remember something. You don't want to cut this right in the middle. This is the middle line right here. And you see I'm cutting it over a little bit. And the reason is when you want the roof to line up, one of those sides has to overlap like that, you see. So that you don't you don't want it like this, you know, to have that uh, open V in there. So you have to have one of them has to be the thickness of whatever you're cutting longer. So you can see this side's going to be longer, and uh, and I'll show you one more quick tip. Down. You need to cut a perfect square out of a rectangle. Take the block of wood, place it in here. Bring your fence up against the blade, just like that. You see, just like that against the blade. Lock down your fence. Pull your wood out like this. Flip it 90 degrees and then run it through the saw and you'll have a perfect square. If you have your square, just take a small piece of scrap paper, cut a, uh, a triangle here like this, just like that, right? That you have it on the one side. Fold that triangle in half and then cut out any design you want, just like this, using a scissor. Now it's folded in half. Just cut out any design you, you would like. And, uh, and when you open it up, it'll give you a nice, like this, we're making a heart. See? So when you open it up, it'll be a heart. And then you make another design down here, and then you trace it onto the wood. Once you have one cut out, you don't bother with the paper anymore. You just put this one over here on top of here, and you trace this onto here. And that'll give you an additional one of these. And that's uh, the sides now, of the you roof. notice, I cut out these holes just to make it easier for when I'm using the jigsaw. You know, uh, these holes are already, the curves are already made. But uh, funny story about this jigsaw. My dad bought this at a flea market for $5 one time. And uh, he brought it home and it didn't work. He was a little disappointed. I took it apart, cleaned it out, and uh, adjusted the brushes. And... One of my favorite jigsaws for the simple reason that my dad was so proud of me that I was able to fix that. That was like 25 years ago, but that's why this means a lot to me. This little 968 two-speed jigsaw. All right, we're coming along nicely now. You can see we took those end pieces. You see what we did? And... Uh, now that's our roof and you make that separate and I'll show you why the beauty of this design you see there's our base okay now you just take the roof and look pops right on couple screws boom and you are finished now the only thing is that there's uh, a little ledge now again we got to paint and prime it but I usually put a little uh, a borderline around here border board so that the seeds don't fall out and everything now uh, you could use any any one by two or something like that but what I found when I was walking and I've been waiting to use them is these Do you know what this is somebody threw out some Venetian blinds and this is a uh, cedar I believe look at that straight beautiful grain can you see that isn't that beautiful? So anyway, these are the uh, Venetian blinds that some wooden blinds that somebody threw out. And of course, I saw this wood. I was like, I can use this for something. So I'll trim out the whole thing using this free wood. And uh, and then I'll paint it up. And this is already stained. So, you know, I'll, I'll put that on later on. But uh, now what we got to do is prime it up. Put the uh, put everything together. Give it a little some uh, decorative painting, and we're good to go. Bob's your uncle. Now we're attaching the uh, the border trim around the bottom of the base of the bird feeder. We ripped down a one by two to uh, to make this piece, and now we're going to affix it to the base. And to do that, the first thing you want to do is whenever you're you're going to nail close to the edge, like you know, like we are here, we're nailing close to the edge. You want to pre-drill this because this is pine. It'll split. There's a good chance to split if you don't 
pre-drill it. So avoid the headache, pre-drill it. And when I say pre-drill it, it should be the exact size of the nail because the head is what's going to hold it on there. Secondly, uh, these nails here are inch and a half long. They're a little bit long to put this trim on, you know, and that can give you trouble. So anytime you have a nail that's too long, you just take your pair of nippers like this and at an angle, cut it like this. And now you just made an appropriate size nail for here. So then you put it on like this. That's all you need. And nail it down. You have a nice finish. Also, galvanized nails whenever you're dealing with uh, an outdoor finish. I will paint over these, but you have to have some kind of protective nail. You don't want a regular bright finish nail because they'll rust out. So that's some good tips right there. And we're calling this project done. You know, this is a really good project to do if you, especially if you like birds, because these are much better than bird feeders. Birds love a bird table. Now, the one thing is don't put a lot of time into it because if you do, like I said, they're outdoor and they're made of wood. So they're going to, you know, in a, in a couple of years, they're going to get all disheveled. You just take it down, you throw it away and you build another one. But if it takes you so long to build one, you, you'll kind of you won't want to take the one down that you built. And uh, this green that you see here is, yep. My 45-year-old Oxospar quick-drying enamel. This stuff, 45 years old. How can that be? I get paint today that uh, doesn't last six months, you know? Anyway, uh, enjoyed this project. I think you should make a bird table. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and the birds really love now, it. Now, I'll take you up there when we're about to install it. So uh, I think you should really build one of these if you can. It's a lot of fun, and you'll have a good time. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.